Are you one of those Yona players? Those guys who int under enemy turret and then die 10 times and can't stop diving in. We all like to believe we aren't that guy. But the truth is, if you've never entered on Yone, you haven't played him enough. Or you're just lying. But then, how does the enemy Yone do it? How does he always seem to go 10-0 before tower plays fall? The answer is actually pretty simple. There's a thin line you can walk with Yone that will allow you to take control of your games without feeding your ass off. First, you need to understand Yone's identity. Your kit is designed as a hybrid between a skirmisher and an assassin, which means that even though you have good DPS, you can't overstay your welcome. Thankfully, your E is designed to help with that. You get 5 seconds to get in, do your job, and get out. Similar to an assassin. However, you sacrifice the lightning fast burst for sustained damage with auto attacks in your Q. What does that mean effectively? Is Yone just the worst of both worlds? The best? Nah, he's just different. First of all, his laning phase plays more similarly to that of a skirmisher. You use your sustained damage to punish the opponent when they miss abilities or use them on the wave, and you whittle them down with smart trades. You have to remember that Yone's early game stats are legitimately pathetic, so that's where most players make the most mistakes. If you're against a ranged mage, it's very tempting to just go in and trade on your E cooldown, but there's a specific way to do it, otherwise you lose even melee trades to the Orianas and the Syndras. You need to stack up your Q3 and go in with E. If you land a knockup, congratulations, you can now do your trade combo and probably run them down for the rest of your E duration. You miss the knockup, cut your losses, just W to get the shield and E back immediately. Rinse and repeat until you have enough damage to kill them if you land everything. Now comes the mid game, where lots of players new to Yone will inevitably screw up. You see, even with shield build completed, Yone is still pretty squishy. You can't afford to overstay because most champions can still kill you at the slightest misstep and most bruisers will eat you for breakfast regardless. Remember, come mid-game teamfights, you're not the one supposed to jump in headfirst into the enemy team, you're the follower. If you just go in and hold off 5 enemies, sure, that 1.5 seconds of hard CC will feel nice. And then you get one shot and wonder what you did wrong. The mistake was playing the fight in reverse. As with any assassin, Yone needs an opening to go in and assassinate the enemy backline in those 5 seconds of E. Unlike most assassins though, Yone's mobility is much more limited than telegraphed, making it difficult for you to dodge CC, so you have to be extra cautious when doing the one thing you need to do to take fights the right way. Account for key CC abilities on the enemy team at all times. Let's say the enemy team has a Malzahar. Obviously, going in alone is suicide, so naturally you just wait until he ults someone else so that you can go in and do your job without getting hit with the outplay button. Also, there's no shame in going in with E and immediately aborting, because it's much better to do nothing and be alive than to go in and die without accomplishing anything anyway because you got CC'd so much that you got an AFK warning. The same principle applies to every hard CC ability you can manage to account for. When you play a backline carry, an assassin jumps on you and your team does two things about it. Jack and shit. That's how the enemy backline should feel like when you jump on them as Yone, and it's all about playing around those cooldowns. So in short, Yone is a hybrid champion who plays much like a skirmisher early on and later turns into a weird DPS assassin. Just because you can go in doesn't mean you should. So sit back, wait for the enemy to make a mistake, and then make a clean engage by quickly dispatching the backline and cleaning up the frontline. Patience is key. If you watched until this point, congratulations. That's your first step towards getting better at playing a champion that is very strong yet misunderstood. Now may I interest you in another powerful yet even more misunderstood champion. Azir gets a load of crap for being weak, but this video should explain why that's not the case at all. Hope to see you there and thank you for watching.